to receive in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This is Holy Week. Everybody say Holy Week. This is a week when Jesus had to straighten out a, a number of finalities before he would go to the cross. And uh, the final visit to the temple, uh, the final uh, prayer, um, you know, the, the final supper, and uh, then make his way out of uh, the upper room uh, down to the uh, fountain gate circle the inner part of the city to the outer village walls as he was uh, leaving the streets aligned with fires and tents of Passover pilgrims who have come from the existing nations in order to celebrate the feast of the Passover this fresh smell of of barbecue is in the air as the brazen altars are set up for uh, burnt offerings and sacrifices women are there, they're tying ribbons in their tambourines, their tambourines. The men are tuning up their hearts and harps and sewing up their blow bags. There's going to be a mighty, mighty festival. And the disciples who were with Jesus could not participate in the party because they were set apart to go to a place called Gethsemane. It's in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus is going to bleed the first time. By the time he get to the cross, he would have already bled. The cross is just the manifestation of a work that is already done. This was the season, the time of Passover. And while Jesus and his disciples are making their way down the steps, in onto the streets, ex exiting the fountain gate, somewhere between the village walls, the 11th disciple seizes the opportunity to run with feet that had just been washed by the Savior to betray Jesus and to turn him over to the Roman soldiers. Uh, Jesus makes his way into the Garden of Gethsemane and the heaviness of the burden of death is now revealed unto him as a man and he now realizes that I gotta die. That which he came to do, it took 30 some odd years to prepare him, 33 and almost a half years to prepare him for what's gonna happen to him that particular night and the decision is still his and he prays father let this cup pass from me father it is too bitter and over in the corner he hears the sound of friends who are sleeping and snoring and he really really prays and he says God should I die for sleeping friends and I looked in the scripture and I found out that while Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane and the disciples were sleeping Jesus was somewhat in an unusual but revelatorial way reaping what he had sown himself for when the disciples were in their greatest challenge of life they was on a ship one night Jesus was in the lower part of the boat asleep you reap what you sow and in that moment Jesus decided that I have a revelation and that which I came to do I'm gonna do it even though it's heavy on me I don't care how heavy it is on you, if God anoints you for the task, touch your neighbor ever so gently and tell him you can do it. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? You were anointed to do what you were about to go through and you'll come out on top. Last but not least, finally, he said, let this cup pass for me for it's too bitter. And then he said, no, you know what? Not my will, but your will be done. Immediately, a wind blows in the garden. Jesus' garment is no longer stuck to his body through the humility, humility and, the, and the sweat. But now there's a cool breeze blowing through and that which he was afraid of, he can now do. Did you hear that? It's called peace. It's called peace. And let the peace of God come up on you this week in an unusual way. Mm -hmm. Because the God that I serve, he gives you peace. His peace he gives to you. And his peace he will leave with you. He gives you peace. He, he gives you peace. He gives you peace. He gives you peace. 
The soldiers come. Judas, who had betrayed Jesus for some few pieces of silver, you know, sold out God chasing the dollar. Sold out God with his focus on something else. Points out who Jesus is with a kiss on his cheek. And long story short, they come to get Jesus. But there's always someone in your camp who's close to God, but God ain't in them yet. I better say that to somebody that got some sense. Who's close to God, brother, but God ain't in them yet. No, they, they go to church, but they ain't saved. And they, not, they, and they ain't carrying that sword for style. See, when Peter came to church, he, and when Peter got saved, he knew that somebody's ear was going to have to come off. So he kept his knife. And when the soldiers put his, their hands on Jesus, he pulled it out and went to slicing. And the ear, ear went to the ground. But Jesus reached down and picked the ear up and said, that soldier's going to need this to hear that on the third day, I got up. Let him that have ears, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I believe in our lesson tonight, there's a scripture that goes like that, and I want to start out with that scripture tonight. So read it out. It's in the book of Revelations. Give them the scripture as we prepare for ourselves. There are some elements in your life that are designed to cut off your hearing, to block you from hearing God. But tonight I put your ear back on because I know you need to hear the instructions for your deliverance. The instructions for your breakthrough. You need to hear it. Which is it? Revelation 2, 7. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Go to Revelation 2 and verse number 5. Uh -huh. Here is Revelation 2, 7. Yeah, just go to 2, 5. You don't have to flick pages, just a verse up or two. Lord help her. Hallelujah. Revelation 2 and 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent. Mm -hmm. And do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly mm -hmm. and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. Yeah. But this thou hast that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans which I also hate. He that hath an ear let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Mm -hmm. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Um, Father, tonight in the name of Jesus, help us to hear this word. Crises have cut off our hearing. Disappointments have cut off our hearing. Hurts have cut off our hearing. Financial struggles have cut off our hearing. But I place it back on you tonight. Supernaturally that you can hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to hear this tonight. Uh huh. I want you to go to uh, 1 Corinthians. It's on our lesson. 2, 10 through 15. Let he, him that have an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. What the Spirit is saying. I'm ministering tonight on hearing the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God. Lord, I need to hear your voice. Mm -hmm. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. 
But the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Go to verse number 9. You know when I'm giving my scripture lessons, I, I often tell them to go right to that text. And, and maybe I need to tell them to, to put it up two verses ahead of, of them and then we'll chop it down ourselves. But until then, uh, verse number 8, 7. Verse number 7. Watch this. But, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Now I want to say this. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The Lord gives us words to say and we say it and it blesses people but we don't even know where it's coming from. We speak the wisdom of God. We speak stuff. We, God gives us stuff to speak that we hadn't even figured out. But through faith we speak it. We speak the wisdom of God in the mystery. Now what is a mystery? A mystery is the closing of the eyes, the closing of the ears, the closing of the mouth. As you can't see it. There's no utterance. There's no word. Man, this is going to be something tonight. I feel it. Ah, somebody say, bring it on, Jesus. Here we go. Uh -huh. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, mm -hmm. even the hidden wisdom. Even the hidden wisdom. Mm -hmm. Read. Which God ordained before the world until our glory. So, to touch your neighbor and say, I know some stuff. In my, in my spirit that God ordained, that God ordained before, the world was here, before the world was here and has privileged me, has privileged me to, speak to speak that thing now 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 that means that you need to be speaking more than just a car in a house you need to be speaking your children into positions in the earth that will make your name great right now I don't care how much crap they smoking Call your son a doctor and send the anointing after him. All right, I guess you ain't with me tonight. Here we go. Uh -huh. Which none of the princes of this world knew. Which none of the princes, none of the learned men, none of the politicians, none of the governors knew. No one knew this. Uh -huh. For had they known it, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Had they known this, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. Why wouldn't they crucify him? They wouldn't have crucified him because they know that when he got up, we got up. Yeah. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm up because he got up. I'm up because he got up. Yeah, say it again with a thought. I'm up because he got up. And and how much power do you have now that you're up? Oh, uh, y'all not sure about this. Like, oh, no, how much power do you have? You gotta snap it. <laughs> Come on, say it. what? Oh, I said snap it and pop it. Come on, what? Oh, yeah, that's what you got. You got all power. You got all power. Your bill's gonna be paid this month. You got all. What was that word for? I, I told you, when you get a word like that, you don't sit in your seat. You stand up and you turn around. That's what you do. You, 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 let, you let the principalities and powers know that I've been struggling for a few months, but I just got a word that this month is going to be a month that things are going to be taken care of. And since that is so, the bishop spoken and that word cannot fail in my life. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh-huh. Read. But as it is written. What verse are you at? Verse 9. Yeah, uh-huh. But as it is written. But as it is written. I have not seen. I have not seen. Nor ear heard. Nor ear heard. Neither have entered into the heart of man. Neither. 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 Either. Either. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men. The things which God hath prepared. The stuff that God prepared for me with my name on it. I'm tired of living up uh, beneath my privilege. I'm tired of walking around, glory be to God, on land that belongs to me, trying to rent from somebody that don't even own it. I want my stuff. I want my stuff. I want my stuff. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to somebody. I want my stuff. Earth, you're going to yield my stuff to me. Uh-huh. The things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Yes. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. But God has revealed it unto us by his spirit. Say, I don't know in my intellect. But I know in my spirit. We might as well just close. Y'all, y'all, you ain't killing me tonight. You ain't, if it don't come easy, you ain't going to get it. 
and it's hot too. And, and Maggiano's got a new uh, appetizer on there. You better get this word before I give up. You better act like you want it. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. And Johnny Caramba's got the, 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 what, the dynamite sticks. And the fast starts tonight. You better, you better nudge your neighbor and say, you better get with this. And the Cheesecake Factory is in Durham. How you doing? Yeah. Watch this here. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. But God has revealed us it unto us by his spirit. Read. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Look at your neighbor and say, there's two conversations that goes on when I meet you. Intellectual and spiritual. And many times, my spirit tells me that you lying. You're not a person that's telling you something and some of your spirits say, mm, that ain't even the truth. Thank you. That ain't even the truth. Uh-huh. Watch this. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but, but the, the spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. What God wants to give to you, you ain't got to work to get it. Because he already gave it to you before you got here. You just got to find your yellow tag and go down to the UPS store and pick it up because you wasn't there when the truck came. Listen, I am telling you, it's time for you to get a glimpse in your mind of what God has for you. Look, look, look at your neighbor and say, uh-huh, see, see me now. Cause this is the last time you're gonna see me like this. Ah, uh, I'm about to get my stuff. Woo! Read. Verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Listen, I don't know how. I'm going to get what God showed me in my spirit. But I know this. How ain't my business. So that's, that's your name says, so you ain't got to worry about that. You ain't got to worry about how it's going to come. All you got to know is that it's coming. Shake somebody and say, oh, it's coming. Mm. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's on the way. It, it, it's on the way. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, and, and you know how I know it's on the way? I know it's on the way by the attacks that I'm under. Because if it wasn't going to be nothing, then why are you fighting so hard against me, devil? You fighting hard against me because you know that I'm on to something. Ah, but I'm going to get my stuff. I'm going to get my stuff. Oh, I just saw an angel pass through here, and he's on his way to bring your stuff back. When the favor of God comes on you and the favor of God comes on your life, your credit score don't mean nothing. If it's got anything to do with your credit score, you ain't going to make it. But God said, this one, I'm going to fix it for you. God told me to tell you, act like you got it because you already got it. Act like you, act like you, act like you're driving it. Act like you're living in it. Act like you've been delivered from it. Act like it. And you shall have what you say out of your mouth. Oh, somebody should buy God in here. Verse 14. 
But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. You, you, can't, you can't tell Negroes spiritual things. You know, I forget sometimes, start saying words. You, you pray for me. You can't tell people things that you see that are spiritual. Because they'll shout them down with negative demonic forces. So I ain't telling nobody until I get it. And by the time I get it, it's going to be too late for you to stop me from having it. Only thing I'm going to tell you that it's on the way. And when I drive up in it, uh-huh, here I am. I just showed up. Look at your neighbor and say, I just showed up with all of my stuff. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. It's, 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 it's stupid to tell a person that God's going to bless you like this. When you went to school, graduated with a degree, and can't find no job. And everywhere you search, you can't get no job in the area that you went to school for. And here comes somebody that was on crack, got saved, and got the management position and never been trained for. Oh, don't act like I ain't telling the truth. See, favor ain't fair, but favor is yours. Touch your neighbor and say, I got unfair favor. And I'm still writing checks on it. I know this is a word. Watch this here. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Uh -huh. Yet he himself is judged of no man. Yeah. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus says that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts and as high as the heaven is above the earth so are his ways and his thoughts far from ours God don't think like you think God don't act like you act but when you get into the spirit you act like God and, and, and one of the one of the rights that you have to act like God is to call those things that aren't and command that they exist. So let's start off with something small that you can, that you can call into place. Like bills. 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 You can, you, 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 you. Bills are one of the things that God can't get past not taking care of for you. Because he said it. And if he said it, he's got to do it, right? Well, where did he say it? My God shall supply all of mine. There ain't no s in it. There ain't no s in it. There ain't plural. S in. My God shall supply all of my need. Now the whole need of man is food, clothes, clothing, and shelter. My God shall supply all of my need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Which means that God can always pay your bills. Not some of the time. All the time. He said, I will supply your need according to, not out of what I have, according to what I have. My God shall supply all my need according. You got it. According, not not out of, and you keep on getting it out of. That's why when you pray, you pray so hard. Please, Jesus, oh Jesus, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. He shall, my God, my is he your God? My God shall supply all my need according to His riches. In glory in Christ Jesus. Now, what are the riches in glory in Christ Jesus? 
unimaginable. You can't number the wealth that God has. So he didn't say, I will supply your need out of what I have. If, if the Lord gives me an opportunity to make a million dollars, and I said to you, I'm going to give you something out of the million dollars that I have for you helping me. When I get the million dollars, if I give you ten dollars, did I keep my word? But if I say, I'm going to give you what you are worth according to the to the million, to the to the to the worth that you and me together has caused to materialize. And I'm going to supply your need according to what we have. If your need is $200,000 and I give you $100,000, did I keep my word? No. I'd have to give you what your need is in order to meet the requirement of what I spoke. That's why every believer ought to have a budget. So when you go to God, you say, Lord, you said you would supply my need according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus, which means that he never runs out. So if your need, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying, if your need is $30 million, God's got that according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. He got, he got $30 million. Said, I don't want it out of what you got. I want it according to what you have. And God just said, you got it. Woo! That's for somebody. Read that thing. Oh, no, no, no. Let me do it. You just wait. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to write all these scriptures down. All right. I'm excited. Now, he says, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the hearts of men the things that God has for those that love him and walk upright from him, but has been revealed to them in the spirit. And he, and, and, and he says, and we have the wisdom and we speak the wisdom according to revelation. And so we talk things and we say things out of our mouth that came out of our spirit that God did not allow to run through our psyche or we, we never comprehended it, but it was a word. Have you ever spoke something and said, man, that was a word that came from God. And you knew it came from God because it didn't come from you. You ain't that smart. <laughs> right? I know some of us think we are. We ain't not that smart. I'm not that smart. That came from God. Because when you start fellowshipping and moving in the atmosphere of God, when you start moving and fellowshipping in the environment of God, then God's thoughts starts hitting your brain. And then you start talking like God. Do it for me, Lord. That's what the scripture says, right? Now, go to Matthew 13, 16. Matthew 13, 16. He puts it this way. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, mm -hmm. and your ears, now, for they hear. So now, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men. But, 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 but Matthew picked it up and he says, but blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. What do they hear? Verse number 17. Early I say unto you uh -huh. that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them. Mm. And to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Now, I, thought, I, I thought that you were going to start shouting when you read that part of the text. Now, 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 let me make it clear to you. What God said here is this. He says, now, wait a minute. You run into the meeting to see the prophet. When God has anointed you to see what the prophet is praying that they see. Read it again. Verse number 17 says, For verily, For verily I uh -huh. say unto you yes. that many prophets, many prophets and righteous men and preachers, righteous men and apostles and evangelists and pastors, uh -huh, many have, of them, watch have, this, have desired to see those things, have desired to see what you see. Read. And have not seen them. They ain't seen it. Ain't seen it. 
Watch this. And to hear those things and, which ye hear. And to hear it, but haven't heard it. Mm -hmm. And have not heard them. Mm. Mm. Develop that, Bishop. Say it. You went through a trial that the prophet didn't go through. So you saw a God that a prophet couldn't see. You went through an experience that the pastor didn't go through. So you heard from a God that the pastor couldn't hear from. And you sit in a pew without a title, but you see God. And you hear God. And when you get in trouble, you don't need a prophet. All you need is to hear the word of God in your ears behind you. The teacher can't teach you this one. I've been through hell and God brought me out. I've been through a storm and God said, paddle this way. God said, swim this way. And I heard his voice. So what you talk about don't move me. In fact, I'm just here because I go to church. Because you ain't said nothing in a long time to move me. See, when you've been in the presence of God, it takes somebody who stays in God's presence to move you the second time. You, 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 you didn't hear what I said. You didn't, it's not that I don't want to hear you teach. It's not that I want to hear you talk. I like you. But you don't move me no more because I had a visitation with God. Y'all missed that again. When you had a visitation with God, can't nobody tell you nothing after that. Folks getting all excited because they see angels. So what? Who I just saw an angel. The angel of the Lord was standing over there. The angel of the Lord standing over there. Yeah, well, the angel of the Lord came and stood next to Mary. And they said, why do you seek the living amongst the dead? And she looked up. She wasn't impressed by an angel. She didn't care about that. She wanted to see Jesus. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. And you know why she wanted to see Jesus? Because she sinked him before. And once you see Jesus, everything else is secondary. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to see Jesus. And when you see Jesus, you stop putting your faith in your husband. You stop putting your faith in your wife. You stop putting your faith in your children. You stop putting your faith in your Ouija board. You stop putting your faith in the tarot cards. And you stop putting your faith in Jesus. Matthews 11, verses 12 through 14 and 19 through 23. And it reads like this. And from the days of John the Baptist unto now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. This one, not people. I'm sorry, Mark. I'm sorry. 11. Forgive me. You know, I used to have all this stuff in my head, but I don't. I don't got young now. Mark 11. And verse 12. Uh -huh. And on the morrow. And when, on the morrow. When they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Yeah. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves. And he, seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves. Uh huh. He came. He came. If happily he might find anything thereon. Read. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. Yeah. For the time of figs was not yet. Yeah. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Yeah. No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And Jesus answered, Who? Read it again. And Jesus answered and said unto it. Said on Jesus answered and said unto it. It. What's the it that Jesus answered? The fig tree. So the fig tree said what to Jesus? Read the verse again. Verse number 12. And on the morrow. On the morrow. When they were come from Bethany. When they were come from Bethany. Boy, he was hungry. Uh -huh. He was hungry. He was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off heaven leaves, yeah, uh -huh. he came, if uh -huh. happily he might find anything he there came on. happily, or perhaps he might find anything. I'm not going to preach that today. Read. And when he came to it. And when he came to it. He found nothing but leaves. He only found leaves. Now there's, there's something very important here. That if a fig tree has leaves, it will have either figs or a budding nafa. When he came to it, it had no nafa and no figs. Well, we know why it didn't have figs, because the season of figs was not yet come. 
but it was Nafa season. Nafa is the springing, the budding of the tree to announce how fruitful the harvest is going to be. There's got to be a celebration before your fruit comes. This is going to be a huge blossoming summer. How do I know that? By the amount of pollen that is released this year, triple the amount that we've ever seen before. Pollination announces the summer and the fruit and the flowers are coming. It's greener than it's ever been. And it's everywhere. If you could see yourself in the spirit, you're covered with pollen. You, you are about to you got your green on too. <laughs> you too. <laughs> and you. <laughs> and you. <laughs> Put your hands together for the pollen sisters. <laughs> you. <laughs> you will bloom this year like you've never bloomed before. Touch your neighbor and say, the bees are coming. And the birds are coming. And cross-pollination is going to take place. You're going to produce fruits this year that no one has ever seen before. How many of you know what a, what a, what a nectarine is? What's a nectarine? It's a cross between a peach and a plum and it was manufactured where in a laboratory man has the wisdom now to create fruit that never existed before Never, and they got the power to create flus that never existed before. Right. Flu ain't just flying around, and somebody's in a laboratory someplace making flu. Right. <laughs> Listen, let's, let's be honest. This strain of flu that is out right now is staying with people for two months. Two weeks on your back, two weeks on your back, and um, six weeks coughing, sniffing, and throwing up phlegm. And they say they don't know where it come from. <clears throat> Research Triangle Park. And the antidote is at uh, Glasgow Welcomes. And the rich people has already been vaccinated against it, so they ain't worrying about it. If you can see yourself in the realm of the spirit right this moment, you are covered with pollen. And the bees are coming. And the birds are coming. And the caterpillars and the worms are crawling. And these worms are not negative. These worms carry the potency that you're going to need for cross-pollination. These worms carry the anointing to make your fruit good. 
All you've been dreaming about worms. They should pay. I've been dreaming about worms. Those worms are there to carry something from one tree to the next tree to cause your tree to be better than any other tree that's around. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. And Jesus answered and said unto it. And Jesus answered and said unto it. My question is, he answered it. Who is the it in the text? The fig tree. So the question is, what did the fig tree say to Jesus? Read the scripture again. And Jesus answered and said unto it, mm -hmm. No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit from thee hereafter forever. He answered the fig tree. Do you answer a someone that didn't ask you a question? What did the fig tree say to Jesus? The text says that he was coming from Bethany or Bethpage, which in the Hebrew means house of figs. It was the place where they stored figs so that folks would have figs during the season when, fig, when, when figs would be out of season. And on his way coming back, he looked and he saw a fig tree afar off having leaves. So he knew it was something on the tree to eat. But when he got there, the fig tree said to him, what you come over here for? I ain't got nothing to give you. Jesus says, what do you mean? He said, I ain't got nothing to give you. So what you come over here looking for? The fig tree said to Jesus, I only have a form. But I deny the power thereof. I look like I can produce, but I can't produce. I talk game. And there ain't nothing you can do about it, Jesus. And Jesus said, no man. Eat fruit from thee hereafter forever. Now watch this. And Jesus, seeing a fig tree, answered and said, he saw and he said, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And the scripture says, and the... And his disciples and heard it. And the disciples heard it. Jesus saw and he said, and his disciples heard it. Read on. Verse 19. Uh -huh. And when Eve was come, and he went out of the city. Uh-huh. And in the morning as they passed by, yeah. they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. They saw the fig tree the next day dried up from the roots. Mm -hmm. And Peter called into remembrance, saith unto Peter, him. And Peter, Jesus already forgot about it. So Peter calls into remembrance because Jesus didn't have to think about it because Jesus knew that if he sent his word, it would do what? Accomplish that which he sent it to do. So when Jesus speaks a word, he don't look back to see if it's going to happen or not. He speaks and keeps on walking. Because he knows that his word will not return unto him void. And I want you to get that way. If you're going to speak this thing, you speak it into the atmosphere. You say, I am a property owner. I am a land owner. And you speak that word. And that word goes out of your mouth. And don't look back and say, well, if I don't, be, if I, if I don't become a land owner, maybe, no, ain't no maybe. I want to share this with you. I want you to understand this. Faith does not have a backup plan. There's no backup plan in faith. Faith doesn't have a plan B, plan C. Faith is A and Z at the same time. Declaring the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. So God fixes it on end and beginning. Or beginning and end. And then he places his sovereign will in the middle of it. If you say, I believe you, God, but if it don't come to pass, then I'm going to call my friend. Well, it ain't going to never come to pass because God refuses... To battle with your second or backup plan. When you have faith, when you have faith, faith immediately speaks to you. And when faith says, I believe God, believing God erases all of the options that will be presented to you 
after you spoke out of your mouth, only God can do this thing. Remember, no options, no, 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 no options presents itself to you until you say, I'm leaning and dependent and trusting in you. And the minute you say, I'm leaning and dependent and trusting in you, then the floodgates open up and say, well, maybe you ought to do this, and maybe you ought to try this, and maybe you ought to just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Because if God spoke it, he's going to, there is a word that is spoken in your life that cannot fail. Lady sent me an email at the top of the email. She said, there is a word that is spoken in my life that cannot fail. Fail. I am in New York City. I heard you speak this word eight weeks ago. I applied this word to my life. I am in New York City. I am from Iraq. Heard the word. Applied the word to her life. And God got her out of a country. She said, and I'm telling you verbatim, she said that miraculously and mysteriously, one of the diplomats from the United States of America came and asked her to clean up the flat to which he was, where he was living at. She started cleaning up the, which called, he asked her to translate a few things for, translate a few things, and he turned to her, said to her, how would you like to go to America? How would you like to go to America? She said she would love to go to America. She told him, she said, there is a word that is spoken in my life that cannot fail. That cannot fail. He goes to David Wilkerson's church in Times Square in New York City. God will position somebody in your life that will cause fruit to grow in your life that never grew before. This is your season for supernatural growth. But you got to hear God's word. And when you hear it, you got to speak it. You got to say it. And sometimes you got to say it to an enemy. Because an enemy got enough junk in their stuff to make your stuff grow. You, you, you'll catch that tomorrow. It's called doo-doo, fertilizer. <laughs> Something else, but I can't say on TV. <laughs> you know you put up with a whole lot of people. All right. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, y'all don't even act like you don't know what I'm talking about. It starts with an S, something like that. Shabak. <laughs> Watch this here. Read that again. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remember, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou curseth is withered away. Master, behold, the fig tree which thou curse has now withered away. Say, maybe say, it took 24 hours, but it was still God's word. Now say to your neighbor, say, how long is your word taking to come to pass? Look at your neighbor, say, it don't matter. It's coming to pass. And God is powerful enough that when your word come to pass, he can regulate the time so you can enjoy all the downtime that you had in your life. Ooh, Bishop Bloomer, please preach tonight. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, y'all are making me lose my mind. I'm telling you that it's about to happen because it already has happened. And when the Lord starts blessing you financially, don't be coming to church sitting all sedity. I want you shouting like you did with your broke self. That's the problem. You're broke and you're busted and you're all over the floor. And, you, and, you, and then the Lord gave you $150. Now you're sitting sideways. Now I'm, I'm telling you, you act like that and God's going to take it away from you. In fact, people with money should dance more than anybody else because everything is worked out for you. And calling to Jesus' attention, he says, the master of the fig tree that you cursed has now withered, withered up. Mm -hmm. 
And Jesus answered and said unto and him, Jesus said to it, have faith in God. He said, listen, boys, I'm offended at the fact that you're surprised that what I said came to pass. Well, it's going to happen again. Because what God said about you is going to come to pass. It's going to shock you so bad that your eyelash, your false one, going to be hanging. <laughs> oh, oh, God, I'm going to do it this time. You know, I, I, I never understand the eyelash thing anyway. But those of you that have to have it, put a lot of glue on it, because when this thing happens, He is going to do it, 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 do it. Just lean on your neighbor like that. Just lean one time. Say, neighbor, that's a shoulder lean. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a shoulder lean. Leaning on the everlasting arms. That thing is about to come to pass. I'm offended. I'm offended at the fact that, you know, you, 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 you didn't believe that what I spoke was going to come to pass. Uh, uh, verse 20, did you read verse 24? No, I didn't. I okay. was on 23. 23, read. For verily I say unto you, uh -huh. that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Who shall say unto this mountain, be moved. Say to your neighbor, say, say be, moved. be moved. Okay, be moved. Moved, be moved again. Say it, be moved. Who shall say unto this mountain, Mountain, be thou removed or be moved, and be what? And be thou cast into and the be sea. thou cast into the sea, mm -hmm. and shall not doubt in his heart. And don't doubt. Now, how do you speak the word of God without doubting? You speak the word of God without doubting with. A memory of what he did before. If he hasn't done it before, it's going to be difficult for you to believe him. So that's why the Lord allows you to go through all these little problems so he can get you to believe, 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 believe until your faith is built to mountain moving, sea casting faith. The kind of money that you got to have this time around is 100,000 and above. So God is about to move you into that type of thank you he's about to move you into that and let people call you crazy let them call you sick because oh, he don't know what he's talking about oh they shouting and screaming How? you scream baby and you shall you do what it what works for you and then lend some money to the folk that the person that sat next to you looking like you was like you was retarded and here they say, I'm going to pay your rent for this month because next month you're going to be outdoors with your faithless self. Looking at me retarded while the blessings was going forth. I, I see that people do that all the time. Like, while you're watching, you're mo losing your opportunity to get what you need from God. Because God's going to work this thing. There ain't no way in the world the Lord going to bless sinners and don't bless us. No way. No way. We're, 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 we're. A Shirley Caesar says, you're next in line? Hey, baby, I'm first in line. My next was last week. I'm up for grabs right now. The next number that's going to be called is mine. And yet, do you not realize and that God is bigger and bad enough to call all of us at the same time and meet all of our needs at the same time? We all be first? Like Mother Rose say, why come? <laughs> why come I got to be second you know how come why come I got to be second I ain't got to be second I'm first this time around because my faith has moved me from the back to the front of the line all right let's hear this thing uh-huh and shall not doubt in his heart. And shall not doubt in his heart. Have you have enough a number of situations to take place in your life that you no longer doubt now? All right, watch this. But shall believe. But that shall those, believe. Uh huh. That those things which he saith shall come to pass, 
he shall have whatsoever he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Therefore I say unto you, uh -huh. what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye have received them, and ye shall have them. He said to them, watch this, he said, I didn't curse the fig tree because the fig tree was not producing fruit. I cursed the fig tree because you didn't have faith in me. So I wanted you to see what my word could do if you would believe in what I say. You didn't read it, did you? No, I know, I, I know you didn't see that. I know you see that because you almost got to be in full-time ministry to see stuff like this. <laughs> he laughing. I'm serious. Man. He laughing. I'm serious. You don't have enough time to see it like this. You can't work and see it like this. That's why preachers ain't got no business working. That's why the Lord wants to prosper us so we can get into this. I'll read it one more time. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. Therefore I say unto you. See, therefore. Therefore. What does therefore mean? Therefore. Therefore. Come on, somebody take a shot at it. Huh? Therefore, come on, y'all. So I'm scared. I ain't saying that. I just said it. Be like, wrong. Karen will put her whole head down and just start shaking the head. The devil is like, ain't no way to. Therefore, uh huh. Uh huh. Say it again. Because of. Say, that's that, see, that's that little piece that we miss. He said, I want you to know all of this that you see happening happened because of. Because you didn't have faith. I had to show you that what I speak comes to pass. And I want to show you that after today, whatever you say will come to pass. If you believe it, you shall have it because you said it. That was for somebody in this place today. 24. Therefore, I say unto you. What things soever ye desire when ye pray, uh -huh. believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Okay, now, ten things that prevents us from hearing the voice of God. Number one, lack of study. Lack of study. Now, how could, how, how is it that, read my, my underline. There for that. When you fail to study the word of God, you will hear all different types of things except for the voice of God. Mm -hmm. You become more prone to making impulsive decisions because you are not sensitive to the will of God. These are the people in our church that is upset with me because they can't get an appointment. And they want to know what kind of church is this that I can't see the pastor. The kind of church this is that you can't see the pastor is that the pastor got his own problems. Y'all didn't hear that. The pastor got his own problems. And the pastor's job is not to give you an, a second opinion on God. The pastor's job is to preach the word and to keep the sheep together until the Lord of the harvest comes. If you come into church and you're hearing the word, you're going to need to see the pastor less and less. Why? Because this pastor teaches a thorough word. And this ain't a bunch of no scripture references and running back and forth. It's solid. And if you're listening, you, you say, I need to talk to Bishop. And while Bishop is talking, Bishop say exactly what you mean. Say, Why you didn't come to see me? Because while you was preaching, I got what I needed. And that was it. And I thank God for that. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. No need for me to stay all night long. You know, there's something new on the menu out in Magianos. I got out there, Bishop. Praise the Lord, somebody. <laughs> the word. Right? Okay. All right. Now, how is it that studying can, lack of study can hinder the voice of God? How is that? How is that? Because this is God's word it's his voice so if you don't 
study it, you can hear it. Read. Two, lack of prayer. You must fellowship with God in prayer in order to hear what he has to say. Yeah, you, know, you, 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 you know, that's the real big problem with Bethel, right? We have a church who has tremendous word that goes forth. But when time comes for praying and time comes to give time to God, many of you do not. And I know you pray at home and you walk. We're not talking about your personal prayer. We're talking about the corporate responsibility that we have to the gathering of the assembly. Now let me say this and get on everybody's nerves. You have to declare a Sabbath in your life because if you don't, you won't honor God. You have to. Bishop, everybody, you have to declare a Sabbath in your life. You can make all the excuses you want to. Busy, don't have time, da 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 da. All of those things are secular. You have to declare a Sabbath in your life. If you work on a job that command that demands that you work on Sunday, there should be one day out of the week that is totally God's. I'm not talking about the ritualistic day or Saturday as being a Sabbath, but you have to declare a Sabbath in your life. And if you do not declare a Sabbath in your life, you will stop hearing the voice of God. God will stop speaking to you and whatever is taking your time will control your passions, will control your appetite and will cloud your vision. That is a fact. Every person needs to declare a Sabbath. So I work on Sundays, but you know what? Every Monday, I stay in the house for five, six, seven hours. I'm in the Word because church is not going on, but I got the television on. I'm in devotions. This is God's time. So just because you can't come to the corporate setting of church, you should have a Sabbath declared. And let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. We, we play all these kind of games with God. We wait for the Lord to bless us. The Lord blesses us. He begins to prosper us. He begins to do great and mighty works for us. He begins to do mighty, mighty things in our life. And then we get into the pursuit of happiness. Thank you, Will Smith. And we start pursuing happiness. And what Satan does, he increases our appetite so we're never satisfied with what we have. Then we lose the cell in our brain called celebration. The celebration cell, uh, uh, um, the fuse blows. We blow that fuse, and what happens is this, is that greed jumps on us, and so every ounce and every bit of our time is wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in stuff. Then we start, s we, 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 we lose our consecration, so we no longer spend time under one voice. We become preoccupied with being everywhere. So on first Sunday we're here, second Sunday we're down at the other church, third Sunday we're over here, we got a visit over here, and, and, and now the word is confused. And don't look at me like I'm retarded, I know exactly what I'm saying. And I don't care where you go. So you don't never hear me preach no sermon. Don't go over there. You don't hear that. Because I got the word. And when you got the word, you ain't got to use control. What I am speaking is for your life. When you start halting between two and three opinions, you need to just take off your clothes and go, go to uh, Walt Disney someplace. It's true. You have to declare a Sabbath for your life. And your children has to see that the Sabbath is honored. And if they don't, do not come praying for them to get out of jail. There has to be a Sabbath declared in your life. Sunday comes, we go to church. All my business is done 
after a certain time. Uh, uh, we contracted these people. This guy, he makes millions and millions and millions, millions of dollars. We contracted this guy. First thing comes out of him, he's an Indian guy. First thing came out of his mouth, well, you know, Reverend, I can't do any business on Saturday. I said, Saturday is a very important day for us. We need you to do it. No, 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 no. I can't do any business on Saturday. I have to deserve the Sabbath. Watch this, what he said. Next thing he says, but I can come on Sundays. I said, no, you can't come on Sundays. I, 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 I can come on Sundays. So he wants me to break my Sabbath. But he's not going to break his. He wants me to stop what I do. But he's not going to stop what he does. And both of my hands and one of my feet to God. I'm standing there talking to him. He backs up while I'm talking to him. I hear you, Reverend. I hear you, Reverend. He goes in his car. He pulls a mat out, throws it on the floor, and while I'm talking to him, gets down on his knees and rocks in his thing because it was time for him to pray. And I got convicted. You can't hear God's voice when your appetite for life has kicked in. And watch this. Your appetite and your addiction is creative. It will think of ways to keep you bound. I just preached. Now, prayer. Prayer. Prayer says, I don't know what I'm praying for, but I have declared a Sabbath. I have set aside this amount of time for you, God. For you. Say to your neighbor, say, for you. Yeah. And ain't nothing going to come in between that and nothing is going to break it. Nothing. Number three. Number three, low self-esteem. People you, with you, low self-esteem. You mean, you mean, you mean people with low self-esteem can't hear from God? No. How do you hear from God when God already told you that your esteem is high. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, he already told you that. Amen. Now, what else are you thinking about? Now, if you think, if you have low esteem, you're listening to another voice. It's not the voice of God. God telling you all day long, you're beautiful with your ugly self. <laughs> That's what he'd be telling you. You'd be ugly, but he said, you're beautiful. You are beautiful. Now, who are you going to believe? Me or God? Believe God. I know I can't see what God sees, but God sees it. He sees it. You ain't pretty to me. I don't know what your wife sees in you. But that's you and her business. And beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And don't be mad at me that my eyes don't behold your beauty. Right? Low self-esteem. Read. Number four. Lending your ear to too many ungodly sources. Wow. 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 Someone say, this, this is not a good word, but you, you, you follow me with this and trust me. Someone say, stickability. <laughs> say it with authority. <laughs> All right, now, you have it in your mind to start a business. Stick with it. Well, if it don't work in the first three months or something like that, I'm out of here. Nah. Wait a minute here. Stick with it. it. Takes time. I didn't say quit and you, 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 you keep your day job, but stick with it. Don't be so easily removed. Ready to start something else. Say it. Stickability. I'm, I'm gonna stick with this thing this time. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try. Who's this word for tonight? Really? 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 Thank you. 
Watch this. Number five, always telling God how to answer your prayers. Go back to number four. I want you to hit this one time. Number four, four uh -huh. lending your ear to too many ungodly See, sources. And I, I didn't want to miss that. Stickability. Stickability. See, when, when, when God gives you something and you lend your ear to other voices, those voices can knock the plan of God out of you. And that which was a God idea becomes now a good idea and you leave for the good idea without the God idea and the God idea is the idea that's anointed and remember it's on the morrow when the fig tree dries up it's four days later when the sun shows up so there is a word that was spoken is going to come to pass but you left before it came to pass because you have all these other voices in your head in your head. Listen to me. If you are visiting, you in this ministry, you're a member of this church, and you are visiting here twice a month and someplace else twice a month, I release you tonight to go there and be under that voice because I know this voice is confusing you. The problem is not the other voice you're hearing. The problem is this voice because I'm preaching the word. And if you got to be in two places... You ain't God. You can't be in more than one place at a time. So you need to say, I love you, Bishop. I just love da 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 You know, but go there. I'm talking about Sunday. I ain't talking about Tuesday night thing. I'm talking about Sunday. You go and you be there because there's too many voices speaking to you. I like the word that Bishop preaches, but I like the choir over there. <laughs> Go get under the choir. <laughs> Go get under the choir. It's like anything else. We 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 gonna get better with time, but right now we new wine. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Too many voices. Too many voices. I, I used to, I used to work at a a, 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 um, a ice cream parlor called Swinson's in Brightly Square Mall, and I also worked at the Royal Villa, which is now the Baptist Church on Seventy, and I worked in Shoney's. No, in, um, in um, yeah, Shoney's, and uh, I had three jobs. I worked them things. I wanted something in life. So I worked them three jobs. And back then they was paying, uh, you know, $3.65 an hour. They give you a 10 cent raise and you think Jesus came. <laughs> but I never forget. I showed up to Shoney's one afternoon with the Swinson's uniform on. Because I had been going so much. And I showed up there with the Swinson's uniform on, smelling like ice cream. <laughs> Butter pecan. <laughs> and I stood at the door and I was talking to the manager, because they really liked me and what have you. And a lady and a man were standing there together at the door. And she said, oh. Let's go to Swinson's. That happened. I had advertised. Swinson's. In a Shoney's venue. And they fired me. Let. Their thinking be their thinking. But how could you? Now maybe that happened. Back then, for this moment right now, I never told the story before. It happened for that, for, for that purpose. Holding down all those jobs and still weren't making that much money. But then God told me about faith. Faith. And God did with one job what all those other jobs could not do. Now he's doing with no job what no job could do. 
you say what you want to. This Negro paid. In full. Amen, somebody. Thanks be the God that giveth us the money week after week, month after month. People, people get upset with you, but the Bible says make your boast in the Lord. What number are you at? Number five. Five, uh-huh. Always telling God how to answer your prayers. Then they out there. God talking to you, you telling God exactly how you want him to answer your prayers. He's sovereign. You think it's hard to tell God how to answer your prayers because guess what? He did. He already answered it. You right, say it. She all did. Say it. I heard you. Don't you preach no more in my sermon tonight. <laughs> Read. Number six, being too busy to listen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Being too busy to listen. Read. Number seven, complaining when you should be listening. Wow. I tell you one thing and stuff like that. I hear Bishop preaching every day. Like everybody getting their blessing and stuff like that. But I'm going to get mine. That's right. I'm just going to believe God. No, you're not. You're talking. The person sitting next to you, the Lord done spoke to them to give you a car, but you're running your mouth. Now, they done got upset and said, no, Lord, I know you don't want me to give this car to that running mouth. Uh-huh. Number eight, reacting when you should be seeking. Yeah. Uh-huh. Number nine, giving up too soon. Now, who's that? Giving up too soon. Number ten. Being too stubborn to do things God's way. Now, God's got a way for you to do it. He got a way for you to do it. Do not become satisfied. No disrespect. How old are you? If you can tell your age, you're 46. You're going to live 54 more years. How old are you? 51. You're going to live 49 more years. You say, praise God. You don't believe that. How old are you? 46. 54 more years. What are you going to do for the next 54 years? How old are you? 61. Stick stand up. Get, get up. Mm-hmm. Turn around. 61. 61. You already live. No. <laughs> You're going to live 39 more years. See, see, I believe that we can live to 100. believe that we can live oh man I believe that we can live to a hundred and the question is what are you going to do for the next 39 50 49 54 54 years what are you gonna do for the next 54 years because you're getting younger every day I mean you you don't smoke no crack, do you? You don't smoke no crack. No. You don't smoke no crack. No. You do look like you smoke a little weed. I'm going to talk to you about that later. Get you totally delivered. In Jesus' name. Woo! Because when, when I said it, put the camera on her. Because when it, put the camera on her. Cause when, cause, cause, cause there you go. Put the camera on her. Right there, right there. Because when I said it to her, put the camera on her. Somebody retired. There you go. Put the camera. When I said it to her, somebody said, you don't smoke crack. She said, um. <laughs> she. Gotta think about that day. smoke no crack and, and smoke weed and stuff like that. And you don't do that, do you? You don't, you don't, you don't drink no wine for Nessa, do you? Put the camera on her. Put the camera on her. 
Why was that funny? Yes, my Lord. No, you, 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 you got to be careful when you talk to the saints, because see, you just don't know and stuff like that. You ask, okay, do you drink wine? No, I don't drink no wine. The devil is like, I don't drink no wine. I don't even like wine. Wine don't taste good. What do you drink? I drink Long Island iced tea. Mudslide. <laughs> you, know I mean? you don't know. We, we live in a new age, a new time, when people do things differently. I'm just going to close my eyes because the Spirit is telling me stuff now. Some of y'all falling asleep in church ain't because you're sleepy. <laughs> it's because you're a little hungover. <laughs> you're going to live, how many, how many are going to live to 100? Say, say with me, say, I'm going to live to 100. Or die trying. Karen, how old was your grandmother? How old was your grandmother? 40 days shy of 95. And if Karen's mother came in here tonight and sat next to her, you would not be able to tell who the mother and who the daughter. No disrespect, Karen. Because if your mother looks young, that means you look old. But anyway... You wouldn't be able to tell. You're, you are going to live longer, so you need to hear God's voice now. So now, how do you live longer? What is the first principle to living life to a hundred years old? First thing is, eliminate the aging process. Stop aging. Stop. Hey, how old are you, George? You're about 31, right? Put the camera on it. How old are you, George? Just stand up. How old are you? 20. So you know, when he get 40, he gonna look like he's about 99 years old. <laughs> we gotta pray for him right now that the aging process stop. The Lord stop it from growing and stuff like that. Because last week your pants was hanging down on your shoe. Now you grew a few and it's up like that. <laughs> then ask God to stop the aging process. Uh, 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 Archie, how old are you? Come this way. Come this way. Come, 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 come this way. Come this way. Come, come, come on. God, don't make the bishop take a long time. Come on. Here you go. Here. You put a little run. When you first came here, you came here shouting. I said, come in. You be up there. And, and now you done got old and something. Come on. Watch this. How old are you, Archie? 49. You are 49 years old. Now, you look good for 49 years old. You're welcome. Go on, sit back down. Man. <laughs> he said, you up here to preach or nothing. <laughs> no revival and stuff like that. 49 years old. Come back here, Archie. Come here. Stand right here, Archie. Yeah. Come here, George. <laughs> Come here. Which one looks older? So the first rule, y'all get out of here. So the first rule is that you got to stop the what? The aging process. And how do you stop the aging process? By eliminating stress and worry from your life. Number two, how do you live to be a hundred? You have to secure a, your financial base by fleeing youthful lust, getting rid of things so that you can just live life. Can you imagine the Lord blessing you with a million dollars over the next six years to put it into a true to value account so that uh, you, 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 you know, they paying you a hundred thousand dollars a year and your million just sitting in the bank. 
And you old, so you ain't got to run nowhere. How you doing? You know, you ain't got to run nowhere. You ain't got to do nothing but just enjoy yourself. Go on a cruise. Go swimming. Call people, ask them, how you doing? Why are you doing? Why are you doing? You doing all right? Fine. That's it. Living life good. Go on when you want to go. Have people work for you. Not working for anybody. Have people work for you. And eliminate those things. And the word of God will do that for you. Because when you get the word in your spirit. Am I, am I good yet? When you get the word of God in your spirit. The word of God will tell you. That your second act is going to be better than your first. Just look at your neighbor and clap your hand one time like this. Say act two. Come on together. Sit back. Act two. Your, your second act. Woo! Is your, your, your second act is going to be. Turn to your neighbor and say, oh, you're going to live this time around. And, and, I'm not, and I know you had some tragedies and I know you had some rough things and I know you had some hard times in your life and, and, and you're starting to tell yourself that you're not, but you are. Because God would not allow you to live this far and put the type of investments that you put in the earth in order to allow some, some wind, strange wind, to come and blow your blessing away. Thank you very much. This is going to work this time. You ran from it long enough. Now he's turning things around to bring you into place. You are on your second act. And in your second act, he's giving you a brand new garment. You're not dressed up like a clown in act two. You're not dressed up hurt in act two. You're not dressed up as a hoochie or a whore in act two. Oh, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. You're not broke in act two. You're not divorced in act two. In act two, you have gone through the storms of life. And now you're able to tell the devil, bring it on. Because I got what it takes to be delivered. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here that understands what I'm talking about. In, in, in act two, you got to take care of mama and grandmama and daddy. That means you got to be wealthy. Oh, you not hearing me. In act two, say, say something about in act two. The weight of your world will be on your shoulders. So God has got to anoint you for the task. In act two. In act two, you're going to have a Mercedes and a Benz. A BM and a W. A Lex and a Sis. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Look at your neighbor and say, in act two. What you ask for, you're going to receive. Hey, have your seat. Have your seat. Tell, tell, tell neighbor. That's act two. That's act two. And you almost killed yourself. Because act one was so hard. Act one was so difficult. Act one really, really carried you through difficult times. But touch your neighbor and say, oh, act two is here. And in act two, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm going in and I ain't coming out. I'm not broke. I got it like that. I'm the lender and not the borrower. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. I don't gossip. I just listen to the gossip. Have your seat. Let me close. Somebody say act two. Act two. Act two. In act one, you didn't know what a diamond was. In act two, your hand can't hold it. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. In act one, you had that much hair. In act two, you done bought enough. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Up in the valley of the jolly green giant. In act number two, God is...
is going to turn things around for you. In Act 1, you were sick. In Act 1, the devil gave you up. In Act 1, the doctor said you won't see 60. But in Act 2, you're already 60, waiting for 40. Because God has the last say. And if God said it, he will perform it. Say it! Look at you and say, that's why I'm quiet. Because I'm going to act two. The clothes I wore in act one, I don't wear those clothes no more. The talk I used to talk in act one, I don't talk like that no more. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come on to me, all ye that are laden and heavy laden, and I shall give you rest. I heard God say, come on up higher, because act number two is about to start. But watch this, before you get to act number two, when act number one is over, God said it's going to be a season of intermission. While the stage and the scene is being set, God said, this is your intermission time. So go ahead on and dance. Go and rejoice. Go to the restroom. Get rid of the flesh. Prepare yourself. Because act two is about to start in about 15 minutes. And when the curtain goes up, this time, God is going to bless you real good. Got you! 
intermission. The party is about to start and life is about to begin. So dance, scream, holler, rejoice. Six people to give them a slap, just like that. Yeah, 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 over second half and the curtain is about to go up what position are you going to be in if you had to strike a pose what position would you be in when the curtain goes up 
this time. Think about it. And then strike a pose. Because at three, it's going up. Think about it. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about it every night and day. I spread my wings and I fly away. I believe I can soar. See me running through the every open door. I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. Lift those hands. In your second, your second act, in your second act, you won't walk. In your second act, you won't crawl. In your second half of life, you're going to fly. Get those hands up and transform them into wings and just soar over the top of your experience and soar over every crisis, soar over every situation, soar over every calamity, soar over every problem. Somebody's entering into their second half. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my life thou hast told. It is well. Now get those hands up real high. It is well. It is well. Come on. With my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well, with my soul, with my Get those hands up and say it. It is. One more time, one more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. Because essentially what you're saying to God, whatever happens, as long as you have me, I can make it. I can make it. I can make it. Whatever your crises are in life, 
Jesus is the lifter of your head and the strength of your heart. And right at home, right where you are, he wants to save you. Come into your life and create your second act. In your second act, it doesn't matter if you were on drugs, doesn't matter if you were an alcoholic, doesn't matter if you were an offender in any sort, Jesus wants to save you. And wherever you're watching this telecast tonight, the Holy Spirit is right there. Even on the uh, DVD and the CD, those of you that are listening by radio, God wants to save your life. Tonight is the night that he's going to save your life. And you can receive the second act of your life right now by saying, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. I believe that you died on the cross and you rose victoriously on the third day for my salvation. If you believe that, if you said that, if you prayed that prayer, email us right now. Email us right now and say, Bishop, I just received Jesus in my life. Father, I thank you for lost souls that are coming to you. Tonight, even in Peru, Venezuela, Russia, Africa, Johannesburg, Nigeria, New York City, LA, Alaska, wherever folks are viewing tonight, save, heal, deliver, set free. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You too can receive Jesus as Lord and Savior in this room by raising your hand and putting it back down. It is just that simple. Somebody just got saved. The angels are rejoicing. neighbor how you doing in act number two clap those hands and bless them all tithes prepare yourself for the seed